This is Appalling News. I'm Paul Chatto. The special news report comes to you from beautiful Hilton Head, South Carolina, where we are taking some time off. But unfortunately, Appalling News never takes any time off. Under the category of you just can't make this stuff up, German sports apparel giant Adidas spent years planning on releasing new running shoes inspired by their shoe made famous during the 1972 Munich Olympics for this year's Summer Olympics to take place in Paris if the city is not burned down by violent tourists by the time the Olympics begin. Perhaps Adidas no longer employ people older than 25 years of age. That or only willful ignorance could explain the fact that they had neglected to check the history books. If they had, they would have realized that the 1972 Olympics were notorious for the murder of 11 Israeli athletes and coaches at the hands of Palestinian terrorists. The coincidental war with Palestinian terrorists now is not something Adidas could have anticipated. What they could have anticipated was hiring Bella Hadid, famous half-Palestinian supermodel, to be the face of the iconic SL72 running shoe revival. Hadid and her family have a history of spreading anti-Semitism and calling for violence against Israelis and Jews. She and her father frequently promote blood libels and anti-Semitic conspiracies, which makes her a perfect spokesmodel for a country with a controversial Jewish past. Not an hour after the campaign was launched on Twitter X and Instagram was Adidas informed of their problematic effort. The next day, all related social media posts were taken offline and Hadid's connection to the shoe promotion was scrubbed. An Adidas spokesperson wrote, We are conscious that connections have been made to tragic historical events, though these are completely unintentional, and we apologize for any upset or distress caused. As a result, we are revising the remainder of the campaign. We are also certain that the unathletic Hadid's most significant athletic accomplishment is running the 28 feet of a fashion show runway. It is no secret that TikTok, a Chinese application, runs its business differently in China versus the rest of the world, and especially in the United States. In the US, TikTok is an out-of-control nightmare of depravity, whereas in China, it is a button-down source of inspiration. Here are two quick videos that highlight these differences. One of these videos would not be allowed in China. Can you guess which one? A lot of people ask me, what should I do or say when I misgender someone? Simply put, apologize briefly, thank whoever corrected you, move on, and avoid doing it again. We're all bound to misgender someone accidentally, so it's important to know what to do when it happens. <laughs> Of course, the video banned in China would be the one featuring the Chinese student because she got the binomial distribution of the square root incorrect. In Northumbria, England, a 12-year-old schoolboy has been investigated by counter-extremism officers after he declared there are only two genders. The child made a video posted online in which he also stated there is no such thing as non-binary. And in response to school bullies who mistakenly believed he supported transgender ideology, he said, I'm gay, not queer. The school told the boy's mother they would refer him to PREVENT, the home office program that attempts to stop people from becoming terrorists, amid fears he could be at risk of becoming radicalized by the far right. Because 
there are thousands of instances of 12-year-old gay boys becoming far-right extremists. It certainly fits the profile of far-right organizations all over the world, such as the Pink Clan and the Aryan Notions, where you can buy hateful potpourri and candles featuring hostile scents. Clearly, the UK has lost its mind when a gay lad is investigated for trying to explain to bullies he's not trans. No wonder the LGB want nothing to do with the T, the Q, and the rest of the psychotic alphabet. We understand that while the Northumberland Stasi was investigating this queer thought crime, the community had a rash of unanswered break-ins and car thefts. A senior officer was quoted as saying, if you had a choice of going after a skinny 12-year-old homosexual and real criminals who might hurt you, which one would you pick? This is appalling news, and that's the way it is.